Ladies and gentlemen, this is internet personality Vangelis, and Hobbylink Japan sent me into the delusion of reviewing the intensely unexpected Itasha Robo, a joint effort of SH Figure Arts and Chogokan Design. When we first saw pictures of this, we all said, Tamashi Features Display Piece, never coming out. When we found out it was coming out, we all said, Most painful web exclusive ever. When we found out it wasn't a web exclusive, well, I don't know what Bandai was thinking, but I'm glad it went into full production. Who knew a vaguely in-scale figure arts car would be so enormous? No matter how much research you do, the moment you pull this out of the box will likely give you pause. The machine attached is a heavy, beefy Toyota Prius covered in surprisingly durable decal work. What's a decal? As far as I can tell, those aren't paint apps, but actual vinyl wrappings. Opening the doors reveals a slightly detailed interior that makes several sacrifices for the transformation. However, it accomplishes the key function of having two chairs for Akiba Rangers to sit in. There aren't any seat belts, but I'm torn as to whether that's a bad thing or just saving me a lot of hassle. Speaking of sacrifices for the transformation, the rear seat is buried. You have to open up the rear section in two places, and whoever's inside ain't visible once you seal things back up. The silver lining is that you can bury them in the Akiba Ranger accessories to store them somewhere, if you're going to use the Itasha as a faux carrying case. There are two accessories to bring up here. First up, maintaining the odd tradition from other Figure Arts original vehicles, there's an alternate antenna in a more rigid material. To be honest, I think the bendy one feels a bit better, and the stiff one's barely much of an aesthetic improvement. More importantly, you get a Figure Arts scale CD single of the z theme song. This can be opened to reveal a clear plastic CD inside, if you want to totally risk dropping some tiny invisible things into your shag carpeting. It's a great little touch, but I really wish there was some sort of slot for it to plug into in the dashboard. Let's pretend we can, and get the transformation going! The Itasha opens up with the hardest part of its transformation, the legs. Not only are there a few tricky multi-movements of heavy ratcheting joints, but you also have to hold this enormous thing while you're trying to get them in motion. And be careful with the silver logo on the front bumper, it is an easy part to damage. Cook sucks. The hips are easily the hardest part of this transformation, as the instructions do not make it very clear that you're supposed to pull the entire crotch block up two clicks to free the golden parts of the thighs. After that though, you plant this car walk mode on the included display stand, and everything gets easier. I appreciate this because it takes a transformation that would demand a good chunk of your undivided attention, and tweaks it into a process that you can do at your leisure, so long as your desk can take the footprint of the stand's base. It lets you get a bit more casual with the conversion, and allows this behemoth to kind of be a desk toy. More on that later. The rest of the process is satisfyingly involved. All throughout the Atasha, there are mechanisms that unlock and then relock in new places for robot mode. All of the major moving parts are sturdy and die-cast heavy. Nearly everything moves with purpose and clicks into place. While it has the engineering of a high-end collectible, the Itasha feels surprisingly durable and playable. Oh, also, you can leave the Akiba Rangers inside if you like, though whoever's sitting in front is in danger of falling out if you aren't careful. Those doors are folded down. No level of impersonal imagery will get across just how enormous the Atasha Robo is in hand. It's as big as a three-pilot mech would be at the figure arts scale. Thanks to my boy Denno on Toku Nation, I also know it's around the size of a large DX Sentai robot. I guess that means it can be display buddies with figure arts for its regular form, and with Sentai robots for, um, plot developments. The Itasha Robo looks like a robot couch potato, with a large central girth and somewhat spindly arms and legs. This is all spot on. The only part of this awkward robot that I find a bit hard to deal with are his side skirts, as they feel like they could have tucked in a bit more. Aside from that, it's everything I wanted. The Itasha's head design is particularly cool, and a pleasure to finally see up close and in a non-CG form. It goes without saying that these are not aesthetics that are trying to win over a large audience, but if you look through the lens of a very intentional design that succeeds at what it sets out to do, you may be charmed by its quirkiness even if you haven't seen the show. And if you have seen the show, what are you complaining about? This looks almost dead on. In robot mode, the Atasha has room for all three Akiba Rangers to ride inside. The lack of seat belts and loss of the doors does mean that you need to keep an eye on the front seat Rangers to make sure they don't fall out. That would be embarrassing. 
In the rear, Akiba Red has got a few piloting options that are surprisingly clearly laid out in the instructions. He can take hold of a pair of fold-out handlebars and literally look through the hole in the Itasha Robo's face, which comes off really well in person. The head can also be slightly transformed into a cannon mode, with a pistol handle deploying for Akiba Red to pull the trigger himself. That this conversion was actually worked into the head is a great cherry-on-top kind of feature. Some kind of beam effect part would have made it a platinum cherry, but... K sera. So big, so big, so very, very big! Anyway, this guy's posability. There is a whole bunch, and I'm gonna show you as best I can. To start off, his head can swivel left and right. This head is kind of easy to pull off by accident. It's connected by two little teeth. And if you don't know exactly how to put it back on, it can be a little bit troublesome. But I kind of got used to it. Going into his arms, uh, they are identical. And they are where some of the real Chogokin goodness begins. Because uh, this shoulder joint is hella ratcheting. This outward shoulder movement... Hardcore ratcheting, the double-jointed elbow, insidiously ratcheting, the bicep swivel, doesn't ratchet, neither does the wrist swivel, but the point gets across, right? Like, there's some, some ratcheting goodness going on here. As for his hands, the fingers are individually jointed at the knuckle. Um, the thumb does not move, and there are no mid-knuckle joints. It's just a tad disappointing, but at the same time, it just prevents a few more dramatic uh, hand poses. This means that his finger articulation is more functional than uh, artistic or dynamic. Uh, he can still hold accessories quite decently, especially with these hardcore ratchets in his arms. It means stuff does not fall from his grip very easily. Coming down to his waist, uh, this guy, perhaps a little bit surprisingly, does actually have a waist joint. It ratchets. One click to... Uh, I guess his left? I was going to say to the right, but... Pretty much a click in either direction. Uh, you shouldn't try to push it any farther. I'm not sure if it's meant to go farther. And even if it could, all this stuff would start crashing together. So, the fact that this guy has a waist joint, I think, is already patently amazing. Coming down to his legs, he's got fully ratcheted hips. Ratchet in that direction and outwards. Although, moving them outwards, again, is a bit limited because all this stuff's going to start knocking together. His knees are rather delightfully ratcheted. This means that pretty much the weight of this guy does not enter into his ability to hold poses. Uh, finally, his ankles can also ratchet forward and backwards. Um, it looks like there's an ankle tilt in the front. This is unfortunately not the case. This is just for transformation because the rear part of the heel can't tilt. So if, no matter what you do with this part, that part's going to be uh, crooked. So this guy's pretty decently posable. And as you can see... This stand is amazing because it can literally hold him off the ground. He is not touching the floor right now. He's held up entirely by this cup on his pelvis. And it really works. Uh, this stand, I think, is part of what makes this guy a desk toy, really. If you've got enough room for the footprint of this stand anywhere on your desk, this guy will only take up that much room. And I think that that's kind of cool, because it means that messing around with this dude doesn't mean you need to set aside time or give him an entire table or anything. Granted, he takes up a lot of a table, but as long as you've got that, you're pretty much set. Uh, the stand has a few other functions, and by a few I mean one other function, and that is if we take him away from here for a sec. The cup up here is a multi-part assembly, and you can actually take out the middle piece, which is admittedly difficult to do with one hand and then put this back down. Now if you arrange the attacher into a slightly lower stance with his uh, legs bent or you know in, in some kind of goofy running posture he's able to be uh, a bit lower to the ground. This helps a lot if you're using detolfs because if you're using detolfs this is the only way to actually get him to fit in a detolf is in a crouched kind of position. Um, finally there are two more points of motion which are worth mentioning and one of them's up here, his cannons, which I forgot to extend out. They can move at this little base here, and then if you want to swivel them individually, they also move around at their point of connection. This means they can arc forwards or swing backwards, or if you want, you can even have them fold all the way back and store out of the way. So that's kind of cool. And then down here on his posterior, he's got some thrusters, and I'm going to do this hardcore haphazardly. 
each of these four little rocket boosters are on individual ball joints. So if you really want to, you can imply that they are blasting in certain directions. That's some crazy ass attention to detail if you ask moi. So the only other thing to answer about this guy is can he stand by himself without the stand? He's got all these heavy ratchet joints and it seems like it should be possible. It is! I'm not going to try to show you how, because I tried that before, and it took forever, and I couldn't even show it on camera. I'm going to cut to a shot of this guy standing by himself, and when we cut back, or maybe, you know what, no, I'll show you. This is me trying to stand him up, and this is difficult to do, because he is still really heavy. If you can find a center of balance, he will be able to stand. I might cut to that shot now, I don't know. But the problem is... He's really not meant to, by his very design. He's got tiny legs and a huge upper body. So even though you can balance him like this... Oh, here we go, I got him. Even though you can balance him like this, I really wouldn't recommend it outside of, like, a parlor trick. Because if he falls over, that's going to suck for him and for you and for anything near him. So I would recommend keeping this guy on the stand where he belongs and... Try to remember which orientation of the stand you use, because now it's it's too high. Anyway, he's got these arms, and they are built to hold stuff, so why don't we take a look at what they can hold? This Denki something kanji Akiba sign looks really classy, using various hues of translucent plastic over a shiny gold undercoat. Unfortunately, it has no means of hanging on or from anything, which is a big bummer to me for an item this pricey. However, one quickly forgets that qualm once you start the surprisingly involved process of transforming it into the signage rifle. Everything clicks to unlock and clicks to relock, moving only in certain directions and forming a very solid firearm. With the help of a slot in the handle and a tab in the Itasha Robo's palm, the Akiba Ranger's robot has a really solid grip on this gun. It looks pretty dynamic, mostly because it's HUGE! The Itasha Robo's joints are tough enough for any pose with it, though. A jewel-made cafe sign, also devoid of any means of being used as a sign, advertises the Tsun Tsun Bar and Dere Dere Cafe. It also splits in half. Each piece unfolds in two spots to form the Tsun Dere Swords, which can be held using the same palm tabs as the signage rifle. These look just as great as the rifle. And thanks to the mini ratchet joints at the base of the handles, they won't collapse under their own weight no matter how gravity's pulling on them. Just beware the blades, they're incredibly pointy. And they're hungry for your soft, soft human eyes. By all means, this looked like it would be a wacky, haphazard, fragile-ass toy. SH Figure Arts has never done anything on this scale, and I was legit worried that this enormous project would fall apart under its own ambitious design. As far as I can tell, whoever was on the Chogokin side of the team really brought their A-game. There are a few spots of notable cosmetic fragility, but the main skeleton of the Itasha Robo is dripping with quality and durability. Between the die-cast mechanisms and vinyl-wrapped exterior, I was very pleasantly surprised to find that I didn't need my kiddest of kid gloves to handle this automotive mecha. I thought this would be a toy I'd transform once every few weeks, but upon receiving it, I went back and forth between modes as much as I would with an off-the-shelf Transformers toy. It has been years since I bought a high-end, three-digit Soul of Chogokin toy, and the Atasha brought back the warm feelings I got from pieces like the Ideon. All my praise of its construction quality does mean that fragile spots like the headlight corners, asymmetrical front bumper emblem, or some of the smaller clip spots cut a bit deeper as they really detract from the awesome durability of the core of this figure. Just take it easy the first couple of times. Once you know how the Atasha moves, a lot of the worry will wash away. And aside from the strength of its build, you also get a few very solid accessories, and a fantastic companion piece to your figure arts collection. Bandai had two huge releases land at the end of 2012, and I am both amazed and elated to say that the Itasha Robo looks like it came out the better toy of the two. Like, Mazinger's cool and all, but you gotta root for the underdog. This is a hardcore high-end piece that I cannot in good faith recommend to everybody on the internet, but if you're financially sound enough to consider adding something of this magnitude to your collection, it is a very worthy centerpiece item. It feels as good as it costs. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Vangelis, and until we're invaded by Guerrilla Marketeers, that's Akiba Ranger and SH Figure Arts, and this is the awkward and adorable crown jewel to finish them off.